So if you're at all familiar with home automation, you probably know the basic structure of an automation. The good old if this then that, not to be confused with the automation platform by the same name. If this then that refers to the typical order an automation occurs. If someone enters a room, the if this, turn on the light, then that. This kind of automation structure relies on having an if this, an event or an input that triggers behaviors or actions. If you've been following along on the channel, you might already know this, but I've decided that in order to build the perfect smart home, I need to get the if thises or my inputs nailed before I can move on to the then that's what we all find so exciting about a smart home. Currently, our if thises are very limited. If we're gonna be able to do things like control our AC zoning automatically and control lighting automatically, we need way more data and we need it to be solid. To get the data I need for each room in my house, we're going to need a lot of sensors. If you've seen my smart homes are dumb video, you probably already know that I'm not going to be content with USB powered sensors stuck to walls or surfaces in every room of the house. I need something that will blend nicely into our home and not require silly and messy USB power supplies everywhere. This proved kind of difficult to find, but thanks to my fellow YouTuber Lewis over at Everything Smart Home and some 3D printed additions, I think I found the solution. When I started work on planning our smart home, I realized pretty early that we'd need a really good way to understand what was happening throughout the home. But what information do I actually need? Well, I wanna have some climate automation, so obviously I'll need a way to capture air temperature and humidity. I also wanna know when someone enters a room, so we'll need motion sensing. But motion doesn't do a good job of detecting people when they're not in motion. So I'll need presence detection to account for that. Then there's some extras like light levels and CO2, which could come in handy down the road. I could get myself a pile of off the shelf smart home sensors from a brand like Aotech, Tuya or Akara, but almost everything I could find had some pretty serious limitations and I hate having to have a bespoke sensor for every individual thing you wanna sense. I even tried Aotech's multi-sensor, but return them because no matter what I tried, they'd stop reporting information after four or five days, even when powered by USB, not ideal. One of the reasons I liked the idea of those units in particular was their recesses, which would allow us to fit the sensor into the ceiling out of the way and clear of obstructions like a downlight. It'd be a neat solution if they worked reliably. After a bit of looking around, I came across the Everything Presence One, created by Lewis and his dad over at Everything Smart Home. It's an ESP32 based sensor that provides presence sensing, motion, temperature, light levels, humidity, and with an optional add-on, CO2 sensing. Now, I'm sure there are other cheaper options that cover some of my requirements, but I couldn't find anything that offered all these features in one neat package. And I like the idea of using motion detection for instant response times and pairing it with a millimeter wave sensor to ensure we don't turn off the lights or air conditioning just because someone's sitting really still. It covers everything I wanted and it's in one package. There's just one big shortcoming, the form factor. The included case is great. It's well designed, looks good, and will do the job for most people. But the idea of mounting one of these on the wall in every room of the house does not align with my self-imposed constraints for the perfect smart home. And how would we power them? We'd need to run USB-C cables up the walls or out the ceiling somewhere, not optimal. Inspired by the recess amounts from Aotech, I decided I would design my own enclosure for the Everything Presence One sensor that fits my needs perfectly and add a feature that I think is missing from the EP1. With my plan in mind, I ordered a bunch of EP1s from Lewis's store and as soon as they arrived, started taking them apart. I wanted to fit this sensor board inside an enclosure that would go into the ceiling just like one of our existing downlights. So after modeling the critical dimensions of the EP1 sensors PCB infusion, I set to work creating my own housing. 
I started by replicating the exposed parts of our existing downlights using a spare to measure, so the sensor would look as similar as possible and not be too distracting on the ceiling. The EP1 with the motion sensor bubble right in the middle just slightly exceeds the available 90 millimeter diameter but with some careful clearancing, I was able to make it work. Next was to handle power. The EP1 can be powered either by USB-C or by five volts to the five volt headers on the board. Thanks for those, Lewis. Running USB-C cables around inside my ceiling was not an option. So instead, I'm gonna use these PoE to five volt adapters to run the sensors on PoE and add that feature I think's missing. If you're not familiar, PoE is a standard for delivering power via ethernet, hence PoE. It allows you to power devices like wireless access points, network cameras, and switches without needing separate power supplies. It sends this power down standard ethernet cables alongside all your network data. To extract this power from non-PoE devices, you can use one of these. These little adapters are cheap as and available in different voltages with different connectors for pretty much any use case. This one supplies five volts via a micro USB plug. I'm gonna be stripping the PCB from the adapter and soldering my own wires directly to the board and connecting them to the five volt header on the EP1 sensor. We're just using PoE for power here. I'd love to use ethernet for the connection to these sensors as well, but I couldn't find any sensors with that capability. Lewis teased what looked like a PoE version of these sensors back in 2023, and I was hoping to use those, but I need these sensors to finish some other projects now. So by using PoE to power these, swapping to the new version should be pretty straightforward when they're finally released. Lewis has promised they're on the way, so he is hoping they're worth the upgrade when they do hit the market. Get subscribed for a comparison when they finally get released. I modeled up the PoE adapter's PCB and created a little compartment for it to sit in behind the EP1 sensor board. I've separated the EP1 and the PoE adapter to try and avoid too much heat from the adapter messing with the EP1's temperature readings. Then I added some mounting spots for a downlight spring, just like our actual downlights. This should make them nice and easy to install and remove should I need to do any maintenance or make any tweaks and saves me having to design a more complex mounting mechanism myself. I printed a handful of prototypes to get the fit perfect. Because I took my time modeling the boards, they fit perfectly on the first try, but I did encounter some issues with the downlight springs. I tried various arrangements for capturing the end of the spring properly, all inspired by downlight designs I found online. Unfortunately, the springs I could get online all deformed after being stretched just once. I had the same issue with the second batch I bought from a different supplier, so I'm not sure what's going on there. The springs for my downlights are able to stretch all the way to vertical without deforming at all, but these, though similar in design, bend slightly every time, making them weaker and weaker. The good thing is they're cheap, so if you overstretch one, you can just replace it real easy. Once I'd figured that out, I test fitted my sensor into the ceiling and... Oh, Apparently at some stage, I forgot that the whole sensor needs to fit through a 90 millimeter hole and made my spring mounts protrude past that point. Idiot. <laughs> so I redesigned the spring mounts to fit through the hole and tried again much better. I was happy with how the sensor was looking and fitting, so I set my printers to work on another five of them, which brings me to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers fantastic CNC machining and high-end 3D printing services that make it easy to bring your ideas to life, whether you're prototyping a part or manufacturing a product for sale. You can upload your design and have it milled from metal, machined from plastic, or printed on one of their professional SLS or SLA printers, all with tight tolerances, fast turnaround, and surprisingly reasonable prices. It's the perfect way to extend your workshop capabilities without needing to spend tens of thousands on tools and machines. You can print a prototype at home and test fit and iterate till it's perfect, and then have it machined for final use by PCBWay. I used PCBWay's resin printing service to have a completely transparent version of the housing manufactured to test out the material for an upcoming project, and it came out incredibly well. It looks amazing. I can't believe this is 3D printed. And of course, PCBWay also offers fantastic PCB production services, which I've personally used for years. 
Upload your board files, choose your specs, and get your custom PCB shipped to your door. They can even handle assembly, so you don't have to solder tiny components yourself on more complex designs. With the PCBWay community, you can even browse and buy open source projects from other makers, supporting them along the way including projects like my ESP32 based everything remote. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I got to work removing the sensors from their original enclosures and then removed all the PoE PCBs from their enclosures too. I soldered on some short wires to connect them to the headers on the EP1. I fitted CO2 sensors to all the units installed in bedrooms these CO2 sensor modules use the extra GPIO pins available on the EP1 board and just push into place. You could use these for other sensors if you'd like, but these little modules are super easy to install and a great addition for bedrooms and home offices and things like that. Do just a little bit of reading and you'll quickly realize how dramatic the negative effect of high CO2 levels in small spaces can be for productivity or quality of sleep. In my case, I'll be using them to alert me when the CO2 level in any room gets too high. This prompts me to open a window and air out the room a little bit. Once the boards were all fitted to the PCB mounts, I went through and updated each of their firmware one by one using the fantastic flashing tool provided by Everything Smart Technology on their website. The units with CO2 sensors need a slightly different version of the firmware, so I made sure to set those up correctly, which is made super easy by this tool. Once everything was installed and labeled, I screwed together the top and bottom halves of the new sensors and fitted the springs. Next, I made my way around the house cutting 90 millimeter holes in our recently repainted ceilings. When we moved in, we replaced all the existing lighting with new down lights. So in most cases, the new sensors going where the old light fittings were, saving us the trouble of patching the holes. It turns out using a hole saw without a proper pilot hole is virtually impossible for an unskilled idiot like me. So I glued a piece of cardboard to the ceiling to act as a guide and managed to get it cut reasonably neatly. Please don't be stupid like me and wear a mask when doing this kind of work. I've been filled with regret and plasterboard dust ever since cutting all those holes. I spent some time in the ceiling running CAT6 from all the sensor locations back to my network switches and stapling them neatly into place. At the moment, we don't have any insulation in the ceiling while we complete a bunch of work up there. So this was surprisingly painless. Then I crimped RJ45 connectors onto the CAT6 cables and fitted all my sensors to all the holes in the ceiling. The Everything Presence One sensors are one of the most fundamental components in my smart home. I'm gonna be relying on these for dozens of automations. It's absolutely crucial that they are reliable and accurate. I'm pleased to report that for the last couple of weeks, they have been exactly that. I had to carefully set up temperature offsets to account for the slight heat generated by the PoE module, but once that was done, they've been working great and have already provided some great insight into the inefficiencies in our ducted reverse cycle air conditioning and how the sun hitting different exterior walls affects different parts of the house. As far as I can tell, these are the best everything sensors available at the moment. So if you're looking for a sensor solution for your smart home, I'd highly recommend them. Good job, Lewis. They're reporting accurately and promptly all while sipping very little juice, which I've been tracking thanks to my PoE switch. I'm incredibly happy with them. As mentioned before, they report a number of stats, but one of my favorite features is the millimeter wave presence sensing combined with motion sensing. This allows you to set up automations that trigger the moment motion is detected, while still having the benefit of millimeter wave radar to help you assess whether or not a room is occupied on an ongoing basis. Millimeter wave is basically a small radar. It can detect minuscule movements like breathing, which allows it to determine if there's someone occupying a room, regardless of how much they're moving about. I plan on using this to enable or disable air conditioning zones automatically to ensure we're only cooling or heating the rooms we're using wherever possible. Our custom zoning system will be covered in a video coming soon. I'm aiming to dramatically increase the efficiency of our air conditioning year round. And I'm bringing receipts. I wanna make sure it actually works. This project really highlights one of the biggest advantages of 3D printing, taking an existing product and improving it to suit your very specific use case. Chances are there's plenty of other folks out there that would like a sensor in this form factor. So I've made the files and bill of materials available for you too. 
You'll find all those links in my blog post at the link in the description. Lewis, if you want to collaborate on a ceiling mounted version of your upcoming and long awaited PoE version, hit me up. I'd be really keen to have a hand in the next generation of everything sensors. And if you think I've missed anything, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you'd do with all of these new if thises. Like I mentioned, these sensors will form the core of dozens of smart home automations. Now we have a lot of solid inputs, we're going to start working on some of the valuable outputs. The first big one will be our air conditioning zoning system in a few weeks time, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss that. If you like this video, a like would be appreciated, it helps tell the algorithm that you enjoy my content. If not, let me know why, I'm always down to try and improve. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll catch you next time.